Uh, and welcome to tutorial 12, which will be about bipartite graphs and matching uh, as an introduction to start with. And this is as regards to how it comes up in the Edexcel Decision 1 Maths A level module, but uh, it should be applicable to most other Decision Maths modules. For more help with your math studies, GCSE or A level, do see my YouTube channel or website. Okay, let's start off by looking at what Edexcel says we need to know. Now, this is a whole subsection to itself uh, called matchings, and Edexcel says we need to be able to use bipartite graphs for modelling matchings. Now, it talks about complete and maximal matchings uh, later, and we're going to do that in uh, the next tutorial, which will be tutorial 13. So for now, we're just going to introduce bipartite graphs for modelling matchings. Right, as by way of background, background, let's talk about some real life matchings, okay, where these might arise in real life. So I'm going to give you a problem here. Now, let's think about uh, Match.com, an online dating uh, website, and their use of potential matching algorithms or bipartite graphs to uh, see if people are suitable to go out with each other. So let's take a look at a problem I've got for you. Uh, and this is how we model things using what, what we call bipartite graphs, which I'll explain to you later. So, imagine the online dating website has five boys, Andy, Bobby, Colin, Dan and Elliot, and five girls, Rita, Sarah, Tracy, Uma and Victoria. And after filling in their details on Match.com, their uh, dating algorithms work out the following. Andy, uh, lucky boy, seems to be compatible with all five of the girls. Bobby... Uh, appears compatible with just Uma, Colin appears compatible with just Sarah, Dan appears compatible with Tracy and Victoria, and poor old Elliot doesn't appear compatible with any of the girls. Typical question to model uh, these sort of matching situations would be to draw what we call a bipartite graph to model this situation. Okay, I want to break it down for you and show you how we might do this. First of all, here are Andy, Bobby, Colin, Dan and Elliot, Read to Sarah, Tracy, Umi and Victoria. Now we said Andy was a lucky boy and he was compatible with all the girls. So we might draw a line from Andy to each of the girls to indicate compatibility. Now Bobby, let's take a look at what we said for Bobby. Bobby was only compatible with Uma. So we draw a line between Bobby and Uma to indicate they might be able to go out. Now Colin was just compatible with Sarah. So... Um, Colin has a line between himself and Sarah, and Dan, we said, was compatible with Tracy and Victoria. So we draw lines between them, but poor old Elliot is not compatible with anyone, so we have no line for Elliot um, between himself and any of the women. Okay, now, that is effectively a bipartite graph, but we would probably simplify it one stage further to look as so. Okay, we wouldn't write the full names out, we'd probably just write letters, and we obviously wouldn't draw pictures of each of the people, we would draw a, uh, a vertex, okay? So this is how it's starting to look like a graph again. Of, uh, here is our vertex or node, our set of vertices or nodes. Here's another set, and there are arcs between each of them connecting them. Now, uh, a couple of things to point out here. In our case here, we're assuming all the boys want to go out with all girls. We're making that assumption here, okay? So a boy can't go out with a boy for these particular five boys, okay? So there can't be any arcs between boys. All these boys are interested in females, and vice versa. All these females, in this case, are interested in males. So there's no um, uh, arcs in between, and that's typical of a bipartite graph. You can only have arcs between this set and this set, but you can't have arcs within the set. So here is an example of a bipartite graph. Now let's pull it together with a formal definition. Now a bipartite graph therefore consists of sets of vertices x and y. Okay, the uh, these set of boys here we're going to call set x. The set of girls here we're going to call set y. Um, and the edges must join vertices in x to vertices in y and not within the set. And if there are R vertices in X and S vertices in Y, we call the graph K subscript RS. So in this case, we've got five boys and five girls. This graph we would call K five five, okay? Because there are five boys in set X and five girls in set Y. 
And that's what a bipartite graph means. You need to know that definition in the exam as you are asked to recall it on several occasions. Okay, let's move to the next idea. I would like you to have a go at a question yourself. I'm going to put one on the, uh, on the screen for you. Pause the video and try and model the following situation by drawing a bipartite graph, just as I've shown you in this example. So here we go. Pause the video. Have a go. OK, hopefully you should have been able to draw a bipartite graph here. Here's what mine looked like in this case. So Alan could do fittings, he could do handbrake or he could do drape break. Bob could do glass, handbrake or interior. Clive could do fittings or glass. Dave could just do uh, drape break. And Ed could do uh, glass or Ed could do interior. So a nice, easy example for you to do there. So next, I'm going to talk about what we call matchings. So here are some more definitions we need to know. A matching is the one-to-one -one pairing of some or all of the elements of one set X with the elements of a second set Y. Now, here was our previous bipartite graph, OK? And currently, for example, A is paired with R, S, T, U and V. I can only have one arc between a node in this set and a node in this set, okay? So I want to create a matching, which is where we pair off, okay, nodes in the different sets with one arc. Now, here's an example of me uh, creating a matching from this diagram here. I'm going to pair off A and R, okay? I'm going to pair off B and U, I'm going to pair off C and S, and I'm going to pair off D and V. Now, do note here, E has no pairing uh, and neither does T. But it says in our definition that a matching doesn't have to pair all of them off, it can pair some or all of them off. So there's an example of a matching there. I'd encourage you to just maybe pause the video and see if you can come up with another matching yourself. Okay, now um, the next thing is what we call a complete matching. Now, that is, the, as the name suggests, it's where every single member of X, that's every node or vertex in X, is paired with one member or vertex of Y, okay? So, in this case here, this is incomplete here. This one we would call incomplete. The reason it's incomplete is pretty obvious. It's because uh, poor old Elliot and poor old Tracy have not been matched up. But say, for example, we could match them up, so everything's as it was before, but Elliot and Tracy are now matched up. That would then be what we call a complete matching. Every single node or vertex in set X is paired off one-to-one -one with every single uh, node or vertex in set Y. Okay, and to finish with then, uh, I suggest we do an example. So let's take a look at this. Here is an example of a bipartite graph, and I would like you to identify four possible matchings from this bipartite graph. Four possible matchings from this bipartite graph. In any case, could you identify a one to what a complete matching? Okay, so pause the video, attempt the question, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, so I'll show you an example of four matchings that I had. Okay, here are four possible matchings from that uh, original bipartite graph. Now this one here is incomplete, okay, because E and I have no joinings. However, this one's fully complete. Everyone in this set is compared with everyone in this, so that's what we call complete. Same here, everything's complete in here, and same here, everything's complete in here. Um, so, nice and easy introduction to bipartite graphs and uh, matching in the first case, what they are. Just to finish with, um, I suggest for further homework, read chapter 7, page 149 to 152, have a look at their examples. Do exercise 7a, page 152, questions 1 to 3. And lastly, have a look at the past paper questions video 12, where some of the definitions that we've talked about here come up in the past paper exams. 
After that, make sure then you tune in to the next tutorial, tutorial 13, which will be on this maximum matching or the maximum matching algorithm, which takes these ideas further. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful in your study for Decision 1 Maths.